So we've talked about color schemes and color theory a little bit and introduced it, uh, done some stuff uh, with color swatches, but we haven't really applied that to an image. And um, so I've got this kind of illustration-y drawing um, that, that we can use as an example of what color schemes do. So for instance, um, a simple way to do that is to use a fill layer um, in digital work uh, or a transparent layer and create a monochromatic color scheme. And um, that changes the appearance completely, right? Flipping back and forth between them, you can see that uh, the feel of the drawing, the mood, the tone changes when you go from black and white to a color. Now, playing with color schemes in different layers, uh, mostly here we've got a uh, complementary color scheme or close to it or split complementary. Um, that changes everything again completely. So we can go through and pick uh, one color scheme and kind of, or a couple of color schemes and do some little variations on this using um, layers that uh, that uh, are kind of semi-transparent. We're just going to use a simple watercolor tool and go through some variants. So we've got monochromatic. So let's take a blue-orange complementary uh, color scheme. So let's take an orange that's um, pretty vibrant right in the middle, and we're going to use this somewhat expressively. We're going to change the tool size to about 250 and go through and, well, let's make it a little smaller. I mean, probably 100 is fine. And we'll go ahead and make the skin tones orange. And what's fun about this is just using flat layers of color, we can still do a lot uh, to change everything. This is kind of how comic books more or less work. So then we can change colors, go into a blue. Um, and we can do sort of a less saturated blue. Um, and here we can work into something like the t-shirt. We could make the hair blue if we wanted. And then we could go into the uh, background with a slightly different orange, right? So we had a saturated one, so now we can do like a darker and less saturated one for the background. Still orange, right? So it's back in the background. We may want to um, make it a little lighter and a little more saturated to kind of accommodate for the fact that we're... Uh, we have a tone already that's down there. So you can see that that kind of changes the whole thing completely. Um, and let's see if we can go in with another blue, um, make it darker, and go into the jacket. We can kind of create an interesting color layer there. So simple color scheme, basic changes the entire look and feel of, of the drawing or the illustration. And we can go back through and kind of do a little bit of blending to kind of give it a watercolory feel again. Work on some, keep the edges kind of loose, change things up a little bit. So 
So I think this is kind of a, a fun approach to thinking about color is using these sort of semi-transparent layers. And if you're working in analog paint media, you can do the do the same thing um, pretty readily uh, through just using transparent uh, washes and glazes over top of your um, other types of work. So we we'll take that layer, turn that layer off. We can do a uh, different color scheme. Uh, let's do a uh, split complementary color scheme with um, uh, red being the predominant color. Um, so let's go with an expressive use of color. So we'll go with uh, uh, red for the um, for the hair, some background elements, and we'll go with the uh, complements for the uh, for the skin tones and such. So let's throw red into the um, into the jacket as well. One of the ways that I like to think about this in a 2D design sense is that right now we're working in a mode called line and local color, where we basically we don't modulate color within much within any given section. So what we do are we use different colors and different values of those colors to um, differentiate areas. So now what we want to do is we want, want to pick our uh, yellow green. and we want to assign that to a different area. So most likely what we're going to do is put it in the skin because the background and the t-shirt don't intersect um, and that'll separate um, everything pretty nicely. So if we go into the skin with this, we're going to create a really strange looking uh, drawing, but it'll be pretty effective um, in terms of uh, implementing a color scheme in a, in a different or, or an unexpected way. I think that's kind of the fun thing about playing with color is that there are certain expectations that one would have of how color works. And, you know, sometimes it's fun to just use those um, expectations and other times it's fun to uh, subvert those completely and change them uh, to something entirely different. So now we've kind of made this like radioactive looking fellow. Um, it's very kind of a strange sort of approach to it. And if we take that blending tool again, blend it all out and work on some edge transitions, things get pretty interesting um, again. So I think this is fun. Um, you know, working in working this way, think about color this way, um, in this kind of design sense, rather than you know, is this the most accurate color? We're thinking of how do we create an interesting image, um, and how do we vary the color to um, adhere to that? So one of the other things that we can do is we can, uh, you know, once we unify our our um, approach, we can uh, reassign each of those colors to a value. So we can say that, um, so we've got a, a, uh, a split complement and then we have our value plan. So our value plan is the white, the black, the uh, the dark gray, and the light gray, right? So wherever we assign that, uh, 
so let's take the um, light gray for the um, yellow green the black we will assign to the blue green the dark gray we will assign to the red and the white will give to the uh, uh, blue green as well so let's see how that works so this we're going to switch modes we're going to go from using line and local color to using um, using color um, that modulates within a particular area. So we're going to take we're going to start with the whites, and we're going to take our uh, blue green. And that's going to be really, really pale. And we're going to keep it fairly saturated for this sort of purpose. Okay, so we're just going to go into the lightest areas. We're going to narrow the tool size down quite a quite a bit so that we can work specifically within that. So again, this is only going to be areas that are bright white. So that means within the skin, we're going to have uh, different color tones that work themselves in. And just for the sake of unity, we're going to include a little bit of that um, that color tone uh, elsewhere in the composition so that we don't split everything apart. Because when you work in a, when you switch modes away from using line and local color and go into this, um, this modulated color mode, more of a Northern Renaissance style, um, you want to make sure that you bring color unity. And one of the ways to do that is to use all the different colors uh, in every piece of the um, uh, image. So let's go in with the uh, with the dark gray next and that's going to be our red. So we're going to go to red and that's going to be pretty dark. We're going to make it pretty saturated. It's not going to be the absolute dark. About right there. Um, so the dark gray is going to be things like in the and most of the jacket it's going to be around the edge of the shadow but not the entire shadow it's going to be uh, along the shadow part of the face in some of the lips um, definitely in here and on the uh, eyebrows and some of the hair in the ear for sure definitely on the neck back into the jacket in fact most of the jackets gonna have this red to it I'm gonna leave some blank spots for the other color tones now we're going to go into the light gray, and that's going to be our yellow green. And again, that's going to be fairly saturated. And we'll, this will wind up being kind of a sickly yellow green. Should be fun. So, light gray. And then this is going to cover a huge amount of background area. We want to make sure that we use that in every little bit again, just to be sure that we do create some color unity everywhere.
So let me go to mix all this together. It's going to work. Okay, and then all we have left is the blue green again for the uh, for the black. And we're gonna make that one real dark, but still saturated, so we can hopefully still see it. Um, and since there aren't too many like black spots in the actual image. We're going to make sure we include a few of those. And again, we're trying to get this into a whole bunch of different places so that it can work. But the biggest use here is going to be over in the deep shadow in the background. So now we get out the blending tool and we go to town kind of um, blending in these colors, mixing them together, making sure that they kind of fill up the, the format and um, we get some color mixture going. When colors modulate, mix, and when edges kind of can blend and be a little bit soft, I think that's when uh, color gets really fun. So again, this is still an expressive use of color um, because we're not really sticking to any sort of sense of realism. We're just sticking to what we set out to do with our uh, value plans and and color schemes. So sometimes pre-planning and kind of picking those color schemes will lead you into areas that you would never really think to do otherwise. Um, and I think that's really fun. And you know we think of giving ourselves restrictions through color schemes as being um, you know, not very artistic because, you know, artistic uh, ability and license is usually about creative freedom, but sometimes the freedom comes from having limitations, it comes from having a restriction, and I think that's what's at work here. Another fun thing about um, the color is, you know, you can pick a color scheme and that's all fine and dandy, but another way to approach it is to use a color scheme and a unifying color. Um, so. Let's uh, turn on our, our monochrome layer. Remember that unifying color is blue. Um, and then uh, if we turn on another layer, we can take this color scheme and give the color scheme as a whole kind of a cast to it. And I think that can be another effective way to work with color. So if we switch color schemes up, we can create a really different looking uh, image by using this unifying tone. Um, and it can push us again into different uh, opportunities. One of the nice things about this unifying color is that if you're mixing paint in an analog way, you can mix a little bit of this color into every single color that you, that you mix. And then everything that you come out is going to have this cast to it, this blue tinge in this case and that's going to make things pretty interesting.